Have you guys ever wondered how a space shuttle lands from space to Earth? Yeah, crazy thought. I thought it just came through, you know, slowed down, came through the atmosphere and landed on a runway. Turns out there's a lot more science involved and it's actually pretty interesting. So today guys, buckle up because we are gonna learn something. So a space shuttle is extremely expensive. It has precious cargo and of course it's being piloted by humans. It is extremely important for that space shuttle to get down to earth and land safely of course. Now the area in which space shuttles usually land is Kennedy Space Center in Florida, America. Um, so we gotta remember guys that this space shuttle is orbiting earth at 17,200 miles per hour. That's 27,700 kilometers an hour. The runway is three miles long. The shuttle will travel the distance of the runway in six tenths of a second. That is insane. For a shuttle which has near to no fuel because it's burns it up getting to space, the fact that it now has to come down on an empty tank almost is ridiculous. And this is where the science comes in, guys. The shuttle's orbiting Earth, and all it needs to do is slow down a little bit, like 270 miles an hour, I think it is, in order for the shuttle to actually start falling towards the Earth. As the shuttle then slows down, it then gets pulled into Earth's atmosphere because of gravity into the upper levels of the atmosphere, and then air resistance starts to take place, and the shuttle will gradually slow down from then. But there's a problem. Have you guys ever seen the videos of comets and asteroids entering Earth's atmosphere on fire, blazing, and possibly air bursting? I know there was one in Russia um, where air bursted and it sent buildings and windows shattering. Yeah, that's actually a problem. But the engineers in NASA have got that covered. Have you ever wondered why the space shuttle looks the way it does? The white body with the black underbody and the wings and nose have special attachments on it well yeah the wings and the nose are made out of a special reinforced carbon carbon material and that black underbody is not just one sheet of metal or anything like that it's actually 20,000 silica tiles these materials guys can withstand extremely high temperatures and pretty much save the day so what the commander and the pilot do in the shuttle is a pitch up now what pitching up is, is they put the shuttle at a 45 degree angle, exposing all these silica tiles, nose and wing, to pretty much take all the brunt of the air resistance. But there is a problem with this. The shuttle has wings. Wings generate lift, meaning the shuttle is gonna wanna go back to space again. It's gonna want to go higher up, and it's pretty much just gonna wanna bounce off Earth's atmosphere. In order to stop this problem, there is a maneuver called a banking. This is where the shuttle turns onto its side in order to bleed off velocity quicker. However, there is another problem with this. By turning the shuttle on its side, you still get the effect of lift. But instead of being pushed upwards, you're being pushed to the side. This, of course, steers you off course. To get back on course, the commander keeps turning the angle of banking, meaning the entry line of the shuttle looks like a squiggly line. As the shuttle is nearing the runway, it prepares for a maneuver called the heading alignment cone. This is essentially when the shuttle gets rid of any extra speed or compensates for too much speed being lost in the process of entering the Earth's atmosphere. The heading alignment cone sets the shuttle for a straight course onto the runway. But guys, let's just take the time to realize that this shuttle has no engines, no fuel, is extremely heavy and barely functions as an aeroplane. It came from space at 17,000 miles per hour. This is insane science, guys. Once the shuttle has completed the heading alignment cone, it has an altitude of 10,000 feet. The shuttle then has a really steep glide slope of 20 degrees flown at 345 miles per hour. Now this is so extreme compared to mainstream airliners because, well, the shuttle isn't really an aeroplane. It barely functions as one. And, well, the rest is history. The commander touches the shuttle down, everyone lives, everyone's happy, and science continues to rule the world. And again, guys, just think, that shuttle around one and a half, two hours ago, was in space orbiting Earth. Insane. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. This is my first ever video. 
please hit that subscribe button only if you enjoyed this content. I will be producing more. The race to the first subscriber is on. So thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you did learn something in this video and there's gonna be more in the future. So thank you.